largest payhouse on the planet. The World Poker Tour is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With a $4.8 million prize pool on the line, it's time for these six players to live the dream. At Niagara Falls in Canada, the only thing better than the view is the poker. It's the North American Poker Championship tonight on the World Poker Tour. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Sexton, and welcome to Canada. We're at the beautiful Falls View Casino Resort, overlooking the stunning Niagara Falls for the World Poker Tour's third annual North American Poker Championship. Hi, and I'm Vince Van Patten, and Mike, let me tell you something. They take their poker very seriously here in Canada, almost as serious as they take their hockey, but they should, because there's been some great players coming out of the Great White North, including the last two WPT Players of the Year, Daniel Negrano and Gavin Smith. So it is only fitting that they have a major event here in the land of the Maple Leaf. Well, Vince, in the past, the North American Poker Championship has taken place in Las Vegas, Nevada, where no amateurs made it to the final six. It's traditionally been a pros-only final table. Tonight, we got a little breakthrough in that. That is right, Mike. Yes, we have top professional players at the table, including John Juwanda, but we also have two amateur players, two average day Joes, you know, guys with real jobs. That would be computer tech John Lamb and a factory worker, Soren Turkowicz. Well, Vince, these guys are truly playing for life-changing money. Yeah. First place tonight will take home $1.3 million and get a $25,000 seat into the season-ending WPT championship. Let's shuffle up the deal. antes for each player at this point are going to be three thousand dollars each. The blinds are going to be at fifteen and thirty thousand. Well, Vince, we've learned that Canadians love their poker. No doubt about that. Five or six of these players at this final table are Canadians, even though many big name Americans were up here playing in this lavish event. All right, the cards are flying. First to act here is going to be John Lamb. John looks at eight deuce. He quickly folds his hand. Next to Soren Turkowicz, the factory worker, got in here on a $90 satellite. Goes out, and Johnny Jawanda with a little suited connector folds it quickly. And Jim Worth with the button has picked up Big Slick. Look at this, and he's going to bump it up. Well, that's worth betting, and he's doing so. Makes it 90000 to go. Right behind him, Mark Karam. He's got a pair of sixes, and he's going to raise. Well, he's coming over the top of the two sixes, Vince. Just doesn't think that Jim has that big a hand. 200 more. Well, he's made it 300,000 straight. Jason Sagel quickly going out. That's going to be the fastest one in history. I am all in. Wow. Jim Worth going all in. Well, Jim Worth not fooling around, going all in with Ace King on hand number one. The professional player that got into a satellite, putting it all well, on I the said line. 200 more. And Vince, both of these yeah. players have almost exactly the same amount of chips, about $1.3 million each. Now put yourself in Mark's seat right now. You dreamed all your life about getting to a WPT final table. That fast, eh? Here you get there, and now the very first deal, you get a decision for all your money. Well, he's getting the pressure from a guy they call Crazy Canuck, and you gotta be a little crazy to sacrifice everything on the first hand. Well, he's got the big Duke Vince, he's got Ace King, he's just gonna put the pressure on his opponent right now, and I think it's gonna be very difficult for Mark to make this call. Well. Total quagmire on the very first hand in Niagara Falls. Who's going to go over the barrel first here? And if your opponent's got an overpair like he could well have, the way this hand was bet, well, you're a huge underdog. I think he makes the correct lay down right there. Nice and right now, probably kicking himself for not just calling and seeing a flop. But how about the impressive play of Jim Worth? The professional out of Toronto, Canada, Straight taking ahead. his first pot, putting it all on the line. Small fear, small fear. Very dominant. Well, very you tell us he's got a lot of personality. A little unusual for a guy who's an online poker star. Put on the seatbelts, we're gonna go for a ride here. But he is well known up here in Canada, and you can see why with players like that. The WBT events for me have been kind of like my kryptonite. I haven't uh, cashed in one yet. This is a nice change. Call. Oh. It would be nice to win the first one that I actually make the money in. We are off and running in Canada. Jim Worth taking down that first pot. Oh, yes, and the players love this event. You look outside your window at the beautiful Falls View Hotel, and you see the gorgeous Niagara Falls and the town. It's, it's incredible. What made you move? 
Okay, over to Jason Sagel. He's definitely a tough pro. I know this guy. In a race. He's been a pro for five years. He's going to raise it with the two eights. Race 70. Makes it 100,000 to go. John Lamb looking down at nine deuce with the button. He won't play it. And now Soren Turkowish. How much is it? Soren Turkowish, the factory worker, has picked up a pair of kings. Keeps picking up hands like this. 400. He'll be clocking in at the poker table instead of the factory before long. Well, there's a $300,000 raise. John Jawanda going out, so it's back around to Jason Sagel with the eights. How much did you serve with today? 1.6, nine. Now, Jason Sagel started this pot with about three million in chips. Soren had about half that many. So Jason can't go broke no matter what happens on this hand. Soren trying to look nonchalant, puts his head down, scratches his head. I'm gonna call. Well, he's gonna make this call. So well over $800,000 in this pot. We are gambling in Canada here tonight, folks. I can't go broke this hand. Here we go with the flop. Well, the flop comes queen and jack three, all spades. Four. Well, Soren's got two kings with the king of spades, and he's going to bet 400,000 here. You saw Jason look back to see if one of his two eights was the eight of spades. Lucky for him, it's not. Call Jason the big bird up here in Canada in the poker room. You know, when you have a sucker, you call him a bird. Been a very successful player over the last couple years, but right now, this looks like a fairly easy laydown, doesn't it, Vince? Yep, he does lay it down. And lucky for him, he did. Or he'd have been in serious jeopardy. Now look at that crowd is going crazy for Soren Turkowish, who has a lot of his friends from the car factory came down here from Oshawa, Canada to root him on. You're right about that, Vance. We've got the forklift drivers. They've all come down to watch this guy go to work here. <laughs> Uh, Literally life-changing money for Soren on the line tonight. No doubt about that. Well, the car factory man took that <laughs> pot nicely. Six players to remain here in Niagara Falls. Stay tuned. We're coming right back. Oh, to win here would be unbelievable. It's a chance for a lifetime. I'll never, I'll never be here again. I know this is my one chance. From Oshawa, Ontario, with Soren Turkowicz. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour and the North American Poker Championship. Now, I am sitting here with two of Canada's finest poker players, Brad Booth and Gavin Smith. Now, how exciting is it that the World Poker Tour finally has a stop here in Canada? It's incredible. It's probably the most uh, prestigious thing to happen to Canada. It's almost like having the Stanley Cup uh, come to our country. It's great. You know, with all the fans and things here, it's uh, a lot of adrenaline and a lot of uh, excitement, so it's great. Yeah, everyone's been really great and pumped about having this Absolutely. here. Now, Gavin, now five of these players are all Canadian. How do you feel about that? I'm a little disappointed by that. I thought we'd have all six. Uh, it's clear that we're the dominant nation in poker. It's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like curling, and uh, you know the Indonesians squeak through the cracks on us. But we'll get them. We'll get them next year when we come back, and we'll have all six there. Thanks for speaking with me, guys. Let's get back to the action. All right, right back to the table. It is going to be on John Juanda, six times at the World Poker Tour final table. He's got Queen Jack of Clubs. Well, he's also got substantially a short stack in comparison to the other players at this table. No doubt about it. He is morphine dripping at this point. Well, he's still got I'm over 350,000 in chips. He's going all in right here, Vince. John just doesn't think he's got enough money to make a raise now. Jim Worth quickly folding. And play later, he's just going to force his opponents to pick up a hand right here. Mark Harum with a 10-3. Can't play that, but look at this. Jason Sagel does have a hand. A pair of ducks. Jason knows at best... He's going to be up against two overcards. You gambling? One reason Jason might consider calling, not only because he has the money to play, is that he'd like to see John Juanda exit this table. But he does not. He folds the hand. And sometimes that's worth taking a risk. Slid it. To knock out a top-notch player like John Juanda. Well, it is the intimidation factor that he gets Big Bird to lay down his deuces because it's John Juanda. Six times at the World Poker Tour final table. And actually tonight, no matter where he finishes, he's going to go over the one million mark in WPT earnings. And that is so impressive. 
I think in a tournament, it's an advantage to be a feared player. People are afraid to mess it up with you. The Unabomber has taken him out. I'm obviously an underdog to win it now. But I'm still going to try my best and just hope things work out for me. So John Juwan had taken down his first pot at this final table. And that's always player. a thrill to have him here because this so guy can that. really play the game. Yeah, he is great. And look at that smile <laughs> on his face. You know what? If I win this tournament, I'm moving to Canada. Now, Vince is just a great story. He was going to go to medical school, and then the World Poker Tour came around. And he's done so well out here playing poker that he's postponed the medical career for a while. Let's go back to the table. It is going to be on Jason Sagel. Raised to 90. Comes in for 90,000 with Queen 10 of Diamonds. John Lamb was out. Soren going out. Back around to John Juwanda, the 9-4 offsuit. Yeah, he looks like a nice guy. Lay it down. And now Jim Worth. Oh, look at this, Vince. The crazy Canuck has picked up two kings. Oh, my. Can't even, <laughs> he doesn't even know what to do. Was that a little bit of a tell, Mike? <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> well, Jason's oh. a top pro. He's supposed to pick up on that for sure. Price. Really? <laughs> oh. Well, oh, see boy. how much he's going to raise. This guy should tie his fingers to the table or something. 350 more. Well, Jason Sago, a top pro, staring him down intently. The crazy Canuck is just, I mean, every tell in the book right there. Big Bird just flies away so fast, <laughs> spotting those tells. Well, the crazy Canuck got a little excited there with the two kings, I think. Hey. Excited is not Hard the word for him. <laughs> There's white foam coming out of the side of his mouth there. Uh, well, folks, in poker, we talk about tells. Yeah. Those are mannerisms that indicate the strength or weakness of your hand. Look at the crazy Canuck here. See the hands going. This guy needs a straitjacket because he just knocked over his chips. He's so excited now. Look at him fumbling around there. Pretend like he has nothing. Now the voice. Raise. It's just gone up two octaves with that. Raise. That was classic. Folks. Be calm, cool, and collected when you play poker, even when you pick up a big hand. And now, Mark Karam, 10-8 with the button. Let me guess. No, nope. it's going to be the battle of the blinds. I gotta stop well, that Jason way. looks down at the jack-10, and he's going to limp in and make the call. First time. But behind him, John Lamb has an ace-jack in the big blind. Well, when a guy limps in the small blind and you've got an ace-jack in the big blind, you have to feel like it's the best hand here. I'm going to raise. And John does think that way because he's raising it. Yeah, put the pressure on, take the money and run if you can. Let's make it 60 more. 60 more. He's going to raise it 60,000 more. And Jason quickly fires the 60 in the pot. In the blink of an eye. Kept it kind of small to see some flops. Play poker like you said. Yeah, let's play some poker, you know. Here we go kind with the flop. The oh, it's Jack, Jack, six. Both players have flopped three jacks, but John Lamb's kicker is higher, and he is in command now. This is just incredible, possible catastrophe here. Jason's bet 90,000. Well, he's led right out with the three jacks, Vince. And look at John Lamb. Well, he is loving it. He's got three jacks with an ace kicker. Return. He's taking a long time to make a decision here, like he's confused as what to do. Oh, what a guy. Well, you wanted to play poker, we're playing. What What a comment. Yeah. Jason, <laughs> well, Jason told him it's your turn. <laughs> he's so excited, he's saying, what a guy. He's saying things that make no sense. Kind of like me sometimes. Well, Vince, he's just calling here. Oh, he's going to try to just slow he, play he trap. He can't suspect Jason's got a jack in his not. hand. And now an ace comes off. Well, John Lamb has a full house here. Jack's full of aces. Jason's going to check. And John quickly checks right behind him. Lucky for Jason. Eight on the river. Well, Jason now with the three jacks has got to think he's got the best hand here. 400. 400. He's betting 400,000. 400,000. Now we're going to see the acting chops of this young man. We know he's going to raise. It's just, you know, how to extrapolate the most money. Jason Sago could really be heading over the falls on this hand. I feel like I need a hat or sunglasses to hide behind right now. I'm going to raise it. Raise. There's only one hand in the world that could beat him, and that is if his opponent held two aces. One million. It's a $600,000 raise. He doesn't want to chase out his victim. 
Well, Vince, the Big Bird's jovial mood just went away. Now we're playing poker. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty tough to get away from three jacks, don't oh, you, Vince? I did, absolutely. I mean... But the way this hand was played, you could put your opponent on a pair of eights in the hole or possibly two eights in the hole where you made eights full now. I'm scared of nothing. All right, I call. Let's see it. Well, he's got to make the call. So wow. John Lamb is going to show him jacks full of aces. Get out the buff bag. And Vince, had John bet on the turn there, I believe he would have doubled up for sure. Oh, yeah. You know, you want to massage him. You want to nurture him along because you don't think he's that Very strong. Well and because of that, Very he didn't well get close to breaking Big Bird. But well played and uh, well acted. It was just a fine performance. And what it was is the amateur taking a nice pot off the pro right there. Oh, sure. No either. doubt about it. But how about this? Big Bird goes in as the chip leader, and now it's just complete devastation for him. Well, Vance, was over 2.3 million in that pot. It's a bad beat. And they're going to Johnny Lamb's stack. The boat is capsized there for our chip leader. It is not looking good. What a turn of events. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. I think it's amazing that the WPT has come to uh, Canada, and this is probably the best thing that's ever happened to poker and tournament poker in Canada. It's a time to show off the Canadian talent. Being Canadian and winning the first Canadian World Poker Tour would be a great honor. Welcome back to the North American Poker Championship out of Niagara Falls. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. Six players remain here tonight. Well, what a storyline we've got here. Four pros at this final table and two amateurs. And right now, the two amateurs are our chip leaders. John Lamb out in front with 3.6 million in chips. Soren Turkowicz in second place with a little over 1.8 million in chips. What a story this is. Yes, it is. And don't forget the great John Juwanda, seat six. He is short stacked. He's got about 400,000 left. It's going to be on the crazy Canuck to act first. That would be Jim Worth in seat number one. Well, he looks down at Big Slick here. He's got Ace King, a nice hand, caps his cards. Oh, boy, he's fumbling again. 90. 90 Got to be so excited, and he goes up to 90,000. Well, we know he loves this hand. He went all in on the first deal tonight with it. Here he bets 90,000 with it. Right behind him, Mark Harum. He's got Ace Jack. He's capped his cards. Potential disaster, perhaps, for Mark. 290. Well, he is going to raise Ooh. it 200,000. Makes it 290 to go. Jason out. John Lamb out. Soren quickly out. And now John Juwanda can't play his queen seven, so two way action. Well, the crazy Canuck, the last time he had this exact hand, his opponent re raised him. He moved all in on him. Will he do it again? Well, he's got about twice as many chips. It's Mark Karam, so you can't get that hurt. If you're going to play it, you might as well go all in. Put Mark to the test. And Mark, I don't think you could call that if he, if he makes this kind of move. If he does call, he'll be in dire straits. Jim Worth used to own a coffee business, and now he plays professional poker. Call. Well, these two tangled earlier. This time he just calls with the 200,000. So a nice pot developing over 600,000 out there right now. Jim Worth has the ace king. I need a deuce. Mark Karam with the ace jack. Well, flop is nine, six deuce. You hit the deuce. No help to either player. Check. Oh, Mark bluffing there said, I need a deuce, and then a deuce hits. 300. Well, Jim has checked, and Mark is betting 300,000, Vince. That's about half his chip stack right now. Well, he is taking the play away oh, from the crazy this. Canuck. What a bold move this is when you nothing materializes on the flop, but yet you're going to bet $300,000. Well, this is part of the problem you create for yourself when you don't re-raise before the flop here. What do you do now? Just half of it, huh? Just half of it. Oh, the glass has come off the crazy Canuck. Well, you heard Jim Worth say just half, meaning his opponent's only bet about half his stack. He didn't move in there. Well, Vince, if he makes the call, you just think he's just going to move in on him and just set him all in there with the Ace King. Well, he's cracking the knuckles now. He's really going to crack the knuckles if he lays oh. his hand down. Oh, my golly, he does lay it down. So outplayed right there by Mark Karam. And Vance, 
I think when the crazy Canuck sees this pot, he's going to realize he should have gone all in before the flop, which would have prevented him from getting outplayed. I think you're absolutely right. I think he made that mistake. He played it a little timid, and it backfires for him. Well, Vince, once he bet nearly 300000 before the flop, he had less than 700000 left. So in that case, just go ahead and go all in with the ace-king if you're going to play the pot. Don't do what he did where you can get outplayed on the flop. Well, nicely done by Mark Karam. 26 years old. He's from Ottawa, Canada. So he's got the whole tribe here tonight. Nice hand there for Mark Karam. Action on Jim Worth. Seat number one. He has 10-4 offsuit. He likes to fold. So Mark Karam now looks down at the two fish hooks, two jacks. 90,000. He comes in for 90,000. Very solid hand. Jason Sagal, Big Bird goes out. And now John Lamb with the button has Queen 9 offsuit. It looks like he's considering something here. Well, he's in position. He's the chip leader here. But opts to lay it down. All right, and now it's on Sorg. And look at this. He has got the weapons of mass destruction. Pair of aces. Well, he's announced 400,000. Not stalling, not to land. Just quickly puts in 400,000. John Jawanda quickly folded his 10-9. Well, Vince, this amateur is getting their attention. You can believe that. He has come over the top of these pros on several occasions here at this final table with authority. You love playing pots against me. Part of the problem is you just don't suspect amateur players are going to make moves at you. In other words, they're not going to make a play unless they have a big hand. That's what Mark is fearful of here. Does Soren really have a bigger hand than two jacks? Because of the WPT cam brought to you by Budweiser, we can see that answer is yes. He does have a bigger hand. Thinking to himself, does he have those hands? Does he have ace-king suited? Should I push all in? Can I go out or just call? Think about how well Mark's played tonight so far. He's bluffed with absolutely nothing, making good moves. Now he picks up a quality hand. Well, Vance, two jacks are a very difficult hand to play in this situation. You know, you only pick up so many hands when you're playing poker. Certainly this is a good hand. But the great players can lay down these kind of hands in this situation. Let's see if Mark Karam can do it here. All in. Oh, he's going all in here, oh, Vance. He's made a crucial mistake, it well, seems. quickly called by Soren, who pops up like a jack-in-the-box. And why not? He's got the best hand possible, and the guy's moved all in on him. Wow. Well, Mark's shaking his head no. He realizes he's only about a 20% chance to win this hand now. One time. Well, it's come 5-5-7. Five, five, what that means is Mark must catch a jack now to stay alive in this tournament. Nothing else can save him. The auto factory worker standing up, intensity on his face. Well, Vince, he's got the car in neutral right now. Got to sweat a couple more cards. Here's the turn card. Well, a four comes off there. And if a jack doesn't come on the river, the factory worker is going to put the car in drive and take a monstrous chip lead here. Well, uh, Mark Caron would be going over Niagara Falls in a barrel right now if he doesn't catch his two outer. Here we go. It's an eight. It's over. So Soren Turkowicz has done it. He has eliminated Mark Caron from this tournament and now taking an overwhelming chip lead at this final table. What a devastating play. Mark Caron, he's going to pick up $169,000 Canadian money. Not too bad. A little frustrating as he shakes hands and walks away. Our sixth place finisher. Well, Vince, he thought a long, long time about laying those two jacks down, I believe. Finally opted to move all in. It was a mistake on his part. And in poker, as they say, you think long, you, you think, think wrong. wrong. We are down to five players at Fallsview. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action in just a moment. Fallsview Casino Resort is definitely the poker capital of Canada. We're the largest, most beautiful gaming resort in Canada. Traditionalists think of Niagara Falls as the honeymoon capital of the world, and it certainly still is that today, but it's so much more. Poker at Fallsview is certainly something special. It's an unbelievable experience bringing the world's best poker players, the everyday poker player, to a destination that is just gorgeous. We are back at the North American Poker Championship out of Niagara Falls. I'm Vince Van Patten with Mike Sexton. Five players remain, and the antes are going up to $5,000. The blinds are going to be 25 and 50 grand. 
Well, the real story tonight is the two amateurs up against the four pros, but they are doing it right now, Vince. They are two massive chip leaders, John Lamb and Soren Turkowicz. Can they hang on and take this title? Over to John Jawanda now. He looks down at an Ace-5 offsuit on the button. Must be the drink they consume here in Canada. Now, certainly John knows an Ace high on the button. Figures to be a favorite over the two blind hands. Let's see what he's going to do here. I'm all in. Well, he's going all in here. We've seen this before. Well, going to try to shut him out. But right behind him. Jim, oh. worth the crazy Canucks. He's got a big hand. Ace, queen. Well, he sure does have a big hand. This could be the demise of John Jawanda right here, folks. How much got, John? Well, he's asked for a countdown here. 428. He wants to know exactly how much he'd be paying. Could knock yeah. out the great John Jawanda with yeah. this in one blow. It's 428,000 to go here. Yes, I just can't imagine he's going to lay this hand down. You would not think so, but let's talk about tonight. John has intimidated Big Bird tonight with his all-in bets. And I'll tell you something. I used to play professional tennis, and I knew Rod Laver real well. And Rod Laver, the great player, used to say that he used to beat players just because he was in the tournament. Players would not play the game. They were intimidated. And look at this. Wow. Now that is respect for the player, folks. Crazy Canuck laying that hand down. Big Bird not going to play. So just like that, John has done it again. And the wow. Crazy Canuck the has got to be questioning his lay down there, Vince. Say that again? Show the 7 3. Oh, it's not a three. It's <laughs> John Jawanda is so impressive. He can bet just with anything. He's taken pots. No one's played a hand against him. And he's still sticking around. All right, back to the table. It is going to be on our chip leader, who has about $3.8 million in front of him, John Lamb. Actually, has a real job. It's a computer tech man. And he looks down at two fives, known as the speed limit in poker. Let me make it 150. 150. And he's going to make it 150,000 to go. He's going to make a bump up, and now it's on Soren, who has an ace three in his hand. The second chip leader does not want to play it. John Juwanda with 10-7. He lays his hand down. Crazy Canuck has a king nine. He elects to fold. Now around to the big blind, Jason Segel. And look at this. He's picked up two aces in the big blind, Vince. Uh -oh. Mother of all poker hands. Pair of aces for Big Bird. Just what you dream about here. Well, you remember that character in baseball called Mark the Bird Fidrich? He used to smooth out the mound before he'd get up there to try to strike out his batter. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Big Bird's doing here. He's trying to smooth things out to figure out how to strike out his opponent. Certainly he's got the hand to do it. Well, Chicken Little song's going off in his head right now for Big Bird. I'm going to raise. Raise. Well, he calls the 150 and says raise. Let's see how much he's going to raise. Look at John Lamb looking at him. Now they look at each other. 400. 400. Well, he's going to raise it 400,000. And you just sense John Lamb thinks he's the big bully here. Mm -hmm. John Lamb with a ton of chips looks insulted by that raise. Look at that luck. <laughs> I'm all in. He's gone all in, and Jason quickly calls, of course, with the two aces. It'd be a crippling mistake here for John Lamb. Oh, boy. John Lamb looks like he's trying to swallow an apple right now. Oh, boy. I'm telling you, he is gagging. Oops. Vince, he really thought the big bird was the big bully in this hand. Opted to come over the top and move all in on him. Thought he could take the pot away from him. Unfortunately for him, timing was off. Well, here comes the flop, Mike. Anything can happen. Well, it's come 7-4-3. Uh-oh. Well, Jason winces because he knows that gives his opponent four more outs. He can now catch a six to make a straight and win this pot as well as catch a five. You got some outs. That's a good flop for your hand. That's a good flop. Other than hitting a five is the best. <laughs> you see Jason not real thrilled with this flop. But Two, three, four. Keep it could have been one. worse, Jason. He's got to dodge a five or a six. So far, so good. For Jason Sagel. He came to this final table as the big chip leader. He could get right back in the thick of things with well over two million in chips if he can dodge a five or a six right here. We are coming down to the river. Niagara, will it hold up or will it fall? Nope, the Jack of Diamonds comes off. So Jason Sagel is gonna double up and win a pot with over two and a half million dollars in it. Nicely done by Jason Sagel, the big bird. 
Big Bird had a little lamb right there. Well, Vince, there's a hand that you just felt that John oh, really Lamb, that. you know, he just thought he was getting bullied around by the Big Bird, and he wasn't going to take it. So he moved all in on him. Unfortunately for him, Jason had a monster duke there, the two aces, and doubles up. Well, the tech support man could afford it. He was the chip leader, so he gambled there, but he gambled wrong. More from the beautiful Falls View Casino as the North American Poker Championship continues. Welcome back to the North America Poker Championship from Niagara Falls. Five players remaining, going after $1.3 million Canadian cash. Well, right now, the story still continues to be the amateur at the table, Soren Turkowicz. He's our chip leader. The guy works in a factory. Vince, did you know that I worked in a factory two summers when I was in college? Did you really? Yeah, actually yeah? did. Drove a forklift. I <laughs> can't action. picture you on a forklift. All right, on at John Lamb. Make it 150. 150. He's got ace three of hearts this time. Doesn't slow down. Comes in for 150,000. Thank you. Call. But right behind him, look at the Soren Turkey, which has got big slick. Amazing. Does not re raise with ace king of diamonds here. Just makes the call. John out with nine eight. Around to Crazy well, Canuck, who's also picked up ace king big slick again. Incredible. He's picked up ace king again. One guy's raised, another guy's called. He's taking the conservative route. He's just calling here with the ace-king. I'm amazed that neither guy with the ace-king has made a raise here in a five-handed poker game. Both going to play it softly. Big Bird getting out of the way. So you got ace-three with John Lamb up against two big slicks that did not raise. Very interesting. Well, here comes the flop. And the flop comes king eight four. Just a great flop for Jim and Soren. Jim Just checks his hand. Absolute score for both big slick players. John Lamb not going to bite here. He checks. Now Soren with Ace King. 350. 350. He's going to make a bet of 350,000. Yep. Action back on the crazy Canuck. You know he's loving this flop. Well, that you dream of check raising in this kind of situation. You flop the perfect hand. Top pair with your Ace kicker. You got the guy on the end betting. Pretty sweet. Well, unless one of these two guys fold at some point in this hand, which seems unlikely to me. Well, this flop out there, this is going to be a split pot. All in. All in. Well, he's going all in right there. John Lamb quickly goes out. And Soren acts like he's got a migraine headache right now. Well, this is an additional $991,000. Well, Vince, he looks very anguished here, but, you know, the only hands that can literally beat you right now are three eights or three fours. You're not going to put the guy on two aces. We know that they both would split this pot if well, he should make this call. He just put the pieces of the puzzle together here, Vince. You know he doesn't have two aces. He would have raised out of the big blind when it got back to him. Yes, he could have three eights. He could have three fours. He certainly could. Those are the only two logical hands that are possible he could have but the question is even if he had a set would he raise it here in this spot wouldn't he just call and hope his opponent continue to bet at this pot i just don't see how you can lay his king down here no i don't think you can but you got a guy that is not a professional player works on auto parts this is a dream of a lifetime going on here 900 what a million He's thinking the worst. Yeah. He's thinking, geez, is this guy, am I going to get, you know, lose half my stack mm. because of this mess right here with Big Slick? Oh, Vince, if he lays this hand down, he may think a lot about oh, it when he goes back to the factory to put the rivets in the car. <sighs> he must think the guy's got three fours or three eights. What else could he be thinking here? Yeah, well, big check and raise. The guy went all in. If he had three eights or three fours, would he raise on the flop? That's questionable also. I would doubt it. I just don't see how you can put him on a set. I call. Well, he's made oh. the call. And you're going to love it, Soren. Yes, it's king. Look at Crazy's reaction there. Just sickened that it's he's going to chop this pot. Well, chop. naturally, when a guy takes that long, you have to think your ace king's the best hand. It looked like the guy's got king queen when he took that long to make the call. 
So we're gonna have a split pot. Dealing out the turn of the river is just a formality here. They might as well go ahead and split the chips up. I put him on a set of eights. I, I, yeah, I know. Yeah. Soren is saying, I just thought he might have three eights. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. He could do the same thing with that. You know, the right? crazy Canuck was glad that he finally made the call after agonizing that long. He had to feel certain his ace king was the best hand, man. I should have pushed pre-flop. I, I might call you. Yeah? I might. For one and a half? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably, maybe I probably lay it down then. Are you the set? Look at where I'm. That, well, look where I'd be right. I know he's not putting all his chips in with. You know what I mean. I know he didn't call king eight. Yeah, you know what I mean. The only thing it. you could have that beat me is fours or eights, and I'm not gonna. You know, if I'm going home, I'm going home. Brave call. I tell you what a story this is. You gotta love it. Guy got in this tournament on a ninety dollar satellite. Here he is at the final table, going for one point three million bucks. Man, she's liable to need a forklift to take the money out of here in case he wins this thing. It's unreal. I'm nervous. When I got here on Tuesday night, we were having a few beers with my buddy, and uh, we see Freddie Deeb and Daniel Negrano sitting at the bar. You know, it's crazy just seeing those guys, right? And then sitting down with other guys like that. When I sat down at the table, everything's fine. It's just uh, anticipation of getting there. Like right now, doing this interview, I'm ready to go on the table, right? It's the waiting that, that's killing me. And I'm playing to win now. I'm in for 90 bucks. Like, I can't lose, right? This is really a feel-good story, folks. I can tell you, life-changing money for these guys at this table. All right, and with that last hand, the antes and blinds are going up to a $10,000 ante for each player. The blinds are going to be forty dollars and $80,000. If you're on the short stack like John Jawanda, what that means is you got to get in there and mix it up. But the action is going to be on the crazy Canuck. Looks down at Dolly Parton, 9 to 5, goes out. All right, Jason Sagal looks down at the King three. He opts to fold. Is that what you guys said about me during your interview? John Lamb with an awful looking four deuce in front of him. I'm all in. Will not play it. And look at this. Soren says all in. He's got a pair of nines. Well, he says all in, but he's just really covering John Juana's chip stack here. Oh. And John's picked up ace queen. He's going to make the call yeah, here. He's got to make that call. Well, we got the classic race situation. It's the under pair versus the two over cards. Unfortunately for Soren, the crazy Canuck threw a nine away. So normally the pair is a slight favorite in these race situations. In this particular case, John Jawanda is actually the favorite now to win this pot. Well, the big time professional John Jawanda on the brink of extinction here. Stay tuned, we're coming right back for the conclusion in just a moment. Welcome back to the Falls View Casino Resort. I'm Sabina Gadecki, and here's what's happened so far in the race for $1.3 million and a WPT championship title. Early on in Niagara Falls, a table full of poker pros looked to send two amateur players up the river. But a computer technician short-circuited one card shark, while a factory worker wrenched another pro right out of the arena. Now, one of the best players in poker is in the battle for his tournament life against a regular guy living out the WPT dream of fame and fortune. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Pair of nines up against John Jawanda's ace queen. So here you have the factory worker, the amateur who's never played in a poker tournament in his life, up against one of the top pros in the world just, just in a classic like, race like situation. Maybe, here goes the flop. Well, flop is 7-4 deuce. So far, so good for the amateur. Soren Turkowicz out front with the two nines. Will his nines hold up? He's got to sweat two more cards here. Well, John could backdoor flush or backdoor straight or catch an ace or a queen. Oh, look, look at this card. Wow. Five of spade comes off. That gives John a flush draw, a straight draw, and he can also win the pot with an ace or a queen. A lot of outs, as we say. He could turn this whole thing around right now. Well, everybody anticipating this river card. Here it comes. Can the amateur take out the great John Joanna? Yes, he's done it. The six of hearts comes on the river. Soren Turkowicz has put a notch on his belt that he'll remember for a lifetime, Vince. Wow, what a Cinderella story this is. A great sport. John Joanna blows kisses to the friends and family out there in the audience. He is our fifth place finisher, picking up $217,000 in Canadian. That's about 193,000 U.S. currency. So John Juwanda, the consummate pro, hung on for a long time tonight in the short stack, finally got his money in in a race situation, lost the race, goes out in fifth place tonight. Uh, always sad to say goodbye to John. He's very mystical, he is classy, and right now he's up to talk to Sabina. 
Thanks, guys. Now I'm standing here with John. Now you came into this tournament short stacked. Now it's really, really great to see you back. You kept pushing in all in. You're really you're hanging on there. I really thought we'd be seeing you in this tournament for a while. Yeah, I thought I got the momentum. I built my stack from about 400 to almost a million. And then, uh, you know, I lost a coin flip there. Call. It would have brought me up to almost 2 million. I kind of have to call on that hand because the blind was so big. I highly doubt this is going to be the last final table we see you at, and good luck in the future. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Well, you certainly can't fault John for going all in there with the ace-queen. I would have done the same thing, of course. He just didn't win the race, and as we say time and time again on the World Poker Tour, you win these tournaments, you got to win the races. And right now, the guy that works in an auto factory, Soren Turkowicz, is the chip leader with over $4 million. Vince, right now, he's got more chips, and they got parts in that factory, it looks like to me. <laughs> he is sitting in great shape, playing in his first ever tournament. Here he is with a shot to take home a WPT title and over a million bucks. Life-changing money. Incredible story. All right, let's go to the table. It is on the crazy Canuck Jim Worth. Oh, wow, look at this, Vince. Oh. Again, the guy's picked up Big Slick. 235. And he's going to push it up to $235,000. Big Bird goes out with 6-5. Now John Lamb in the small blind has got an ace-10. Well, his pattern so far has not been to call anybody's race as he comes over the top of them if he plays. He is an aggressive youngster. Raise it to 700. He's going to raise it again, Vince. He makes it 700,000 to go. Yep. And Johnny Lamb could be taking the lamb here. Oh, wow. He is up against it now. Well, Soren Turkowicz right behind him. The chip leader has a 10-7 of hearts. He elects the fold. We are back around to the crazy Canuck. We saw him misplay the ace-king earlier tonight at this final table and the ace-queen, in my view, against John Juwanda. But right now, all he's got to do is just breathe on this pot and he'll be a dominating favorite to take Johnny Lamb out of here. This is a $465,000 raise by John Lamb, but you got Big Slick in a four-handed poker game. Well, both these players have about the same amount of money. Jim Worth, the Crazy Canuck, with a few more chips. But still, like you said, Vince, what are you waiting on in a four-handed poker game? If you can't play ace-kings, what are you going to play? Look at the crazy Canuck. Get a little crazy on us there. What do you want the guy to do, turn the table over or something? That would be great. <laughs> maybe he's thinking at this time, you know, maybe I, if I go all in, will this guy call? Maybe he's pot committed. I don't want a race situation. I want to move up in money in this tournament. Well, you're right, Vince. He puts John Lamb on a pair. Does he want to gamble all his chips on a race? But we know, of course, because the WPT cam, he would be dominating. He'd be in such a great position. Look wow. at this. He's going out with the big well, slick. I'm astonished by that, Vince. What a laydown by the crazy Canuck there. He's not going for the win there, and that kind of opportunity arises. I think you got to take it. You know, he used to be in the coffee business. He keeps making plays like that. He'll be selling coffee again. Look, I, he's officially lost his nickname. You can't be Crazy Canuck and lay down Big Slick in that fashion. I, I, he's more like Timid Canuck oh, than Crazy Canuck. I love it, Vince. That's it. From now on, he's the Timid Canuck. No <laughs> doubt about it. All right. John Lamb picking up that pot, stealing it away from the Timid Canuck. That's a good one for John. Action's going to be on Jim Worth. This time, he picks up a pair of wired sixes. Very nice. 150. Oh, and he's going to raise it. He says 150, but he has to make it 160. No, 160. You have to raise at least the size of the big blind. Now Big Bird, with the button, has a jack nine. Very unimpressive. Goes out. Well, John Lamb. Yes, I'm making this cheaper and cheaper. He looks down at the jack nine of diamonds here. Well, he's in the small blind. What he got 40,000 in? Okay, cool. Ben, so far, his pattern has not been to call anybody's raises. He's come over the top of them every time. Here, he's going to make the call with the Jack Nine of Diamonds. Last one is Soren, our chip leader. He's got a 98, but it's suited. Going to cost him another $80,000. I can't hardly see how he can lay it down for that. There's 440000 in the pot now. 
kind of hand you want to take a flop with in event. You would think so. Especially if you got four and a half million dollars worth of chips. What call? And yes, he finally does make the call. Yeah. See some flops. We got three-way action, a nine, eight of hearts, pair of sixes, and a jack nine of diamonds. And here comes that flop. It's come ace, eight, three, all spades. Action's on John. No one really connects there. John's going to check it. Soren quickly checks right behind him. And the pair of sixes going to check also. And the crazy Canuck has two sixes, does have the six of spades with it. He raised before the flop, and he has the flush draw, too, and just made the flush when the king of spades came off in the turn. Goes John me. quickly checks it. Soren is saying, why did I even get involved putting another 80,000 in? Well, both these guys got red cards, and it's all black out there. And he has checked again, and now Canuck is not going to bite, though. He's not betting. Now another spade comes off, so all players have a spade flush. They could play the board if they like, but of course we know that the crazy Canuck Jim Worth would have the best flush. He has a six of spades in his hand. Now look at this. Johnny Lamb's going to take a stab at this pot. He doesn't believe anybody else has got a spade. I believe he's betting just to try to win it by himself instead of whack it up three ways. Well, the way Jimmy's been playing it, you wouldn't think anyone has a spade. So you play the board, you try to take a steal here. It's a nice little pot. And let's see if it'll work. Zorn's got out of the way. Now, I can't imagine that the crazy Canuck is going to fold the six of spade in this spot. The only way he can be beat is if his opponent has a bigger spade in his hand and checked it all the way down. But with over 700,000 in the pot, hard to believe he could throw a flush away bigger than the boards for just 200,000. It would be hard to believe. And he does lay the hand down, Vince. I'm surprised by that. Wow. Nice place to bet. You don't think? have a spade. I know you don't. I was just worried he did. He has gone from the timid right Canuck. He's the spade. meek and Super mild Canuck now. Yeah. Well, I disagree, Vince. I'd call him the crazy Canuck for laying that hand down. <laughs> he wants to stick around in this event. Doesn't call anything down. He made a mistake right there to John Lamb's liking. Well, over 700,000 out there. He should have sensed that John was just trying to make a bet there in hopes nobody would call him so he wouldn't have to share the pot. So again, a misstep by the crazy Canuck. The working stiffs, the amateur players are leading the pack here at Niagara Falls. Who's going to take the title and the $1.2 million? We're going to find out when we come back in just a moment. This experience has been crazy. I didn't really care if I was the first one knocked out. Just the fact that I was able to play in a World Poker Tour event and to see all the pros I always see on TV and in person was just exciting enough for me as it is. Welcome back. The World Poker Tour continues in the fifth season. Here we are at the North American Poker Championship. We got a couple amateur players going after millions. John Lamb and Soren Turkwich. And Vince, it really is remarkable when you think guys learn how to play poker by watching the World Poker Tour, took up the game, got into the tournament by winning a satellite, and here they are at final tables going for over a million bucks. Just incredible. Actually kind of sickening. Anyway, it is on the big bird. Jason Sagal, and look at this. He has picked up big slick, ace, king of clubs. Going to raise. Raise. Yep, he's going to raise it. He comes in for 280000 Into Mr. Tech support with a dirty little 32. Can't play that. It goes out. Soren Turkenwich lays down the queen four. And now it is around to Jim Worth. Crazy Canuck, ace queen of hearts. He's, he's also got a big hand here, Vince, ace queen of hearts. Unfortunately for him, because of the WPT cam brought to you by Budweiser, we can see he's dominated. Tiptoe through the tulips here, Crazy. This could be trouble here. Well, Vince, he's taken the conservative route almost every hand, it seems like, with the ace king or ace queen so far tonight. Let's see if he makes the right decision here and can somehow get away from this hand. All in. Oh, oh, he's going all in here. Jason has one of those ace-king decisions. All right, let's do it. But he's made the call. He doesn't throw his hand away. And look at the pain on the crazy Canucks face now. He throws his glasses on the table and now has a migraine headache. He's queen. I got ace-king. Big Bird in a great place, about to take out Crazy Canuck, unless something funny happens. As the cards lie, the Crazy Canuck about a 3-1 to one underdog to win this pot, but certainly 
We've seen worse outdraws than this. It's so one time that I need a three-outer. One time. Well, Vince, as many times as the crazy Canuck has picked up Ace King at this final table, this would, this would, would it be fitting if he's eliminated by an Ace King? This would hurt a little bit if I didn't win this one. You got to get lucky in this one, Jay. Uh, we'll both be winners no matter what happens. Jason Samway, we're both going to be winners. We're getting a nice payday no matter what happens. Let's put it down there. Let's get lucky in one. I wonder if he'd be saying that if he had the ace-queen, the other guy had the ace-king. <laughs> right, here we go with Come the on, flop. Baby. Come on, Come on Oh, the flop comes six, five, deuce. And Jason gives it the fist because two clubs came on the flop. That gives Jason a flush draw, meaning the queen of clubs will not help the crazy Canuck here. Now, doors quickly close in here for Crazy Canuck. Jim Worth, here comes the turn card. Well, the four spade comes up. Now that gives him three more outs. A three that's not a club would give him a split pot, and right now he'd love nothing more than to get a split pot, I can assure you. Got in this tournament through a $320 satellite. The dream very much alive, but he needs to suck out. Can he get it? I need a three or queen is not a club. No, do it. It's a jack of diamonds. So Jim Worth from Toronto, Canada, is going to be our fourth place finisher. And Vance's lab will have a few nightmares about the Ace King. Yeah, yeah. He's just um, off stride with the Ace Kings tonight, it appears. But he is our fourth place finisher. He is going to take home $289,000 in Canadian cash. That's about $257,000 in U.S. Three players remain, going after over a million dollars here at the North American Poker Championship. And the antes have gone up to $15,000. The blinds are going to be 60 and 120,000. He's on Soren, he quickly folds a queen four. And now Jason Sagal has an ace four in his hand. I'm gonna raise. And he's going to raise it. Well, he knows the ace high is a favorite over a two card hand, so he's going to pop it up here. 150. Makes it 270,000 to go. And now John Lamb, he has a queen seven in his hand. Sucking me in, huh? Well, the queen seven offsuit, known as the computer hand in poker circles. Now, this is a support tech guy for computers. Will he take a fancy to this hand, Vince? Well, he'd like to maybe just make this call, splash around, see if he can catch something. Or is it better just to chuck it right now? What's that call? No, he is going to call it. He wants the action. And he is making the call. He's in position with Jason Sagal with the A4. John Lamb with the Queen 7 offsuit. The flop comes 9 6 4 with two diamonds. Jason has flopped bottom pair with top kicker and checks. John Lamb, nothing hitting for him. Let's see if he'll take a stab at a bet. He's reaching for chips. He is doing it. Well, he says, if you're not going to bet I am, that looks like a $300,000 bet, but a quick call by the professional Big Bird. Well, Jason's read him right so far in this pot. He quickly called with the two fours. So nearly $1.2 million in the pot right now. And here comes the turn card. Well, the jack of spade comes off. No help to either player. And again, Jason checks. Now, let's see if the amateur player, the computer tech man, will plunge away, even though nothing hit. It would be quite daring at this moment. He's taking his time. Generally speaking, when you bluff at a pot, you like some type of draw, whether it's a gut shot or something. He has no hand and no draw. But he's got chips in his hands. He sure Look does. this guy. He is going to fire a second shell here, Vince. I'll tell you something. When you call him up and he says, you need a new computer, <laughs> Don't believe him. He's oh, a bluffer. 600,000 is wow. the bet. You know, Jason jerks up in his chair there a little bit. He is really put to the test now, Vince. Yeah. Now, even though he called on the flop rather confidently with the two fours, and this $600,000 bet might slow him down. Now, Jason Sagal, could he possibly make this call with the two fours? He knows his opponent could have a straight draw or a flush draw. Little does he know his opponent has no hand and no draw. Can you really make this call in this situation for that kind of money? No, he doesn't do it. So John Lamb earns this pot by firing two shells at it with absolutely nothing. Well, John Lamb, very impressive with his game. He mixes it up beautifully, and he's not a professional poker player. He is the tech support guy for computers. 
In other words, if your computer breaks down and you need help, after about 30 minutes of awful music, you get John Lamb. I'm usually the guy that everyone complains to. <laughs> I'm able to tolerate a lot of complaints and people like yelling at me. Thank you. It is frustrating, but I think that's actually helped my poker game a bit to keep me off of tilt. Do you know how to turn on a computer, man? You got mail. <laughs> All right, how about that? <laughs> that you saw something? the movie. All right. Anyway, he's on the big bird. Jason Sagel. I'm going to raise. He's got Jack eight of hearts this time, and he says raise. 160 more. And he comes in for 280,000. In the small blind, John Lamb takes a look down at a 4-3 unsuited. Even John can't call that. Goes out. Now, round door chip leader, Soren Turkowicz. He looks down at Jack Nine of Spades. Yeah, and Soren has been very tight lately. Okay. But this oh. time he is going to call it. Yep, he's going to make the call. So he calls the $160,000 raise. He's got the Jack Nine of Spades. He's up against the Jack Eight of Hearts. Let's see what happens. Now the flop comes Queen Nine Deuce, all clubs. Soren's flop second pair, but checks. And let's see if the big bird will take advantage of this weakness. Did you notice how he's looking back at his hand there? 300. 300,000. To indicate he's looking to see if he's got a big club, and then he's betting to represent that he has a club flush draw. Well, he's bet $300,000, and Soren can't play. He has mucked his hand. So give credit to Jason Sagel there for earning that pot. He won it with the worst cards by betting, just as John Lamb did a moment ago. Um, he had position. He raised before the flop. No matter what hits on the flop, if you bet it, you'll usually win that hand in No Limit Texas Hold'em. Yes, the betters have a tremendous advantage over the callers when you're playing poker. All right, three players remain. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more exciting action in just a moment. Tight players do not win poker tournaments. You just can't sit back and wait for aces and kings and expect to win a poker tournament. And look at this. Joe very brazenly bets 200000 with just a measly pair of threes. Just a pair of nines. And well, oh, he's got to go out. Vince, he was just outplayed there. You got to chalk it up to the youngster for staying aggressive with that hand. The guys that are winning now out on the World Poker Tour are not guys sitting back and waiting and surviving, so to speak. They're attacking. They're gathering chips. The power of chips has become more powerful than survival. Now, you may get knocked out of a tournament earlier, but if you get to the final table, you're going to have chips when you get there. I can see who's winning money out here. It's the guys who are attacking, being aggressive, and gathering chips along the way. For more great poker tips, log on to worldpokertour.com. Well, the three-way action continues here at the North American Poker Championship at Niagara Falls. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. And right now, the man they call Big Bird, Jason Sagel, has about $4.5 million. He is our chip leader. He's the pro. He's up against two amateurs. Let's see if the amateurs can come back on him and regain the lead. All right. It is on the auto factory worker. The guy living out a dream right here, Soren Turkowicz. Who has the button right now, and he's got king six of clubs. He's going to dump it. Jason Sagel. He looks down at the king five. Now he's going to make the call. Right into John Lamb. And the big blind has king seven. Got him dominated here with the king seven. He says, give us a flop. It's come queen six three with two spades. That's no help to either player. No, it's not, but it's on Jason first to act. One sixteen. And he's reaching for chips. He bets 160,000. Let's see if John can stand the heat. He has nothing as well. And he's going to make the call here, Vance, with just King High. He lives in a suspicious world, this guy. He doesn't believe anybody. He's got two thirds, so he's got not the queen to three, he's got the six or the. Here we go with the turn card. It's a nine of club. Doesn't help either player again. No well, action's on Jason Sagel. He bluffed at it on the flop. Will he fire a second shell? Well, he's so tempted. He's got his hand on the chips, chattering them around. 480. Yes, he's going to try a $480,000 bet. Just incredible bet here by Jason Sagel. You can't think John is going to stick around now. Just got king high. Well, he called him on the flop with king high events. Remember, Jason didn't raise before the flop. 
Meaning there's a chance he's got middle cards. He could have possibly flopped a straight draw, might have a flush draw. Or he could have popped a pair there. He could have sixes. He should have a nine in his hand, could have a lot of things. So it's a tough bet to call for sure. And could he possibly call him thinking the king high is the best hand? Does he put his opponent on some type of straight draw? Perhaps he's contemplating coming over the top of him. See if he can take the pot away from him. He is going with his instincts here. He believes the king high is the best hand, and he's made the call, Vince. Well, he either believes that or he believes he can take it away on the river. This is very interesting. we got a big pot with a couple guys that are both bluffing. Well, we sure do. Over a million and a half dollars in the pot. Now the nine of spade pops off, pairing the board and putting three spades out there. Mullen. All oh. in by Big Bird. This guy is the Stu Unger of Canada here, Vince. He's fired three shells into this pot. And John Lamb cannot stand the heat anymore, Vince. Oh. He's got to lay down the best hand. And now he shows the bluff on top of it. He shows the king five. And John Lamb is sick as a pup. I, I made a flush on the end. He's saying, what do I have to do to make you slow down? I was going to take a stab at it. I could have checked it down and maybe won. You had to do this, Big Bird. That's incredible poker right there by both players, I believe. I think John did think he had the best hand on the flop and the turn. He just couldn't stand the heat on the river when his opponent bluffed at it the third consecutive time. That is playing the game. <laughs> Three-handed poker continues, and the antis and blinds are going up. The antis will be $20,000. The blinds are going to be a whopping, ridiculous one hundred and two hundred thousand. dollars a few places. <laughs> well, the crowd's still mesmerized by the bluff that Jason Sagal just pulled off. Right now, instead of the big bird, he looks like the big bully in this match, Vince. Well, he is pillaging this group right now, and once again, the action will be on him. He has the button. Looks down at an ace-five offsuit. Down to 1.5. Not even. One. One point one. One point four with the blind. Well, everybody wanting to know how many chips horns got left here. They only got about a million and a half left. They're having four and a half million just a little while back. Let's see what Jason's going to do here with the ace high on the button. Four fifty. And he's going to make it four hundred and fifty thousand to go with the ace high. John Lamb throwing away his jack three and now Soren. Only one to beat has a 10-8. I guess I'm going out shooting. Well, he's going out shooting. He's moving in right here. Yes, he does it. A quick call by Jason. I'm winning. I'm winning. By getting whittled away, you're forced to play something like this eventually. He's a slight dog only, believe it or not. Only about a 3-2 to two dog to win this pot. He made a move at least. And he still is not that big of a dog. So it's not that bad of a play. That's your lucky hand. Good luck. I can't wait no more. You're only 40%. Like, it's not that bad. I'm only 60% favorite. Well, you see Soren's Rooters out there holding their breath here. The auto factory worker is going to catch Lucky. Otherwise, he'll be going back to the factory. 10-8 up against Ace-5. Here we go with the flop. It's going to 10. Well, there it is. It's come 10-7 deuce. <laughs> Well, his friends are high-fiving each other. Everybody's saying, hold him now, noise. So far, so good. Well, Jason comes over. Not a happy camper right now. Well, the crowd chanting soaring now. They want their man to get back in this thing. Certainly right now, he's in great shape to do so. Told you it was your lucky hand. Big Bird trying to be a good sport. Well, he's looking for an ace right now, or two runners to make a straight. Oh, it's an eight. That's going to do it. Soren's made two pair. Oh, yeah. Jason Segel drawing dead. <laughs> Soren has doubled up. A significant double up. He's going to have close to $3 million because of that turn of events. Wow, and he makes a full out, man. He makes the absolute nuts. Tens full of eights here. Oh, man. If you're bold, you get all the goods. Splash around with 10-8. Oh. Fill up. That's all you need. You're He's right. just doubled up. Three players remain. You can't get rid of this factory worker. He's sticking around. So will you, I hope. We're coming right back. Stay with us on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton with Vince Van Patten. Where it falls you in Niagara Falls, Canada for the North American Poker Championships. And what a battle we've got going tonight. It is crazy times. Professional poker player Jason the Big Bird Sagal is out in front with $3.7 million. John Lamb with 3.5, and 
and Soren Turkovic, the factory worker, doing quite well with $2.7 million. Let's go back down to the table. Well, action's on John Lamb. He looks down at Ace Jack on the button. I'm all in. Well, he's all in, Vince. Wow. Oh, he's spent three and a half million dollars on the Ace Jack offsuit. Massive overraise, of course. But Back look off. at this. Jordan behind it has Big Slick, Ace King, and he's made the call. Well, he's got the Ace King of Spade. Yeah, he's made the call. Now Jason Sagal might pick up a hand as well. He's got a 6-5. Ops to lay it down. Oh, yeah. Ace King. Okay, I need oh, help. Well, this could be an amazing misstep here by John Lamb with a huge overbet going all in. Well, Vance, when you bet all in like that, if somebody calls you, you're beat, period. That is right. And that's the case right now. Soren about a three to one favorite to win this pot out in front with the ace king of spade up against the ace jack. Well, I tell you, John Lamb has about $800,000 more than Soren. I can't believe I have all my money in. Like, it's just a shooting match. So if he does not, Get lucky with his hand, he will still be alive. Well, Vance, He's just two hands ago, Soren was on the short stack. He just doubled up a minute ago through Jason. Now he has a chance to double up through John and regain the chip lead. But let's see what happens. Here comes a flop. It's come seven, three deuce. No help for either players. So right now, John Lamb looking for a jack to take the lead in this pot. Factory worker with a dream come true here. What a position he is in. Well, everyone holding their breath here. Here comes the turn card. Come on, Jack. Well, it's a four. That means a five would give both players a straight. They would split the pot. John Lamb needs a jack to win it. And right now, Jason Sagal saying, geez, why didn't I gamble this pot? I had a five, six. They'd be drawn dead. That is right. John Lamb needs a jack to win the pot. A five to split it. Let's see if he can get it. Nope, it's a three. So bingo, bango, bongo. Soren Turkowitz once again our chip leader at this final table. And you gotta say, Big Slick has been the hand of the evening for better or worse. This time for the much better Soren Turkowitz. He is doubled up. He is now our chip leader. It's 2.5. So John Lamb not dead yet. But he's definitely circling the drain right now. John Lamb in a bit of trouble. Can he come back here at Niagara Falls? Well, back-to-back -back double ups by Soren Turkowicz with over five and a half million dollars worth of chips. Up and down, he's gone tonight. All right, Big Bird's gonna fold queen eight. I was asking for that triple up too. Now John Lamb in the small blind with 10-5. Well, Vince, he's only All got right. about a half a million in chips. Blinds are 150 and 300,000. There go the rest of the chips in. Well, virtually you got to go with anything. Right behind him, Soren. Well, got to figure he's going to call anything at this point. He's already in for 300,000. Well, but he's got call. an ace-queen to go with it. I'd just call in the dark if I was him. But sure. look at the hand he's picked up. The ace-queen of hearts. Cards. And as the cards lie, he's about a two-to-one favorite to win this pot and eliminate John Lamb from this tournament. And this crowd can smell blood right now. Certainly Soren's girlfriend, Michelle, his mom, Susan, sister, Sonia, a lot of fans in the house for him. <laughs> and the chanting of Soren continues. They're gonna make a folk hero out of this young guy. John Lamb has to get lucky to stay alive. Let's see if he can do it. He's about a two to one underdog right now. And a queen comes right off on the flop. John Lamb is going to have to catch two running cards. Combination of tens and fives to stay alive in this tournament. What a rush. Soren is on. Picking off the queen on the flop. Look at that. He is out in front. And the chanting continues. Here comes the turn card. Can Lamb stick around? He has a five there. Well, he's got life, Vince. He had to catch two hunters in a row. He's got one of them. He needs a 10 or a 5 on the river to double up and stay alive in this tournament. And don't forget the difference between third place and first over a million dollars. So, so much riding on this very last card. Well, here it comes. Five. Needs to be a 10 or a 5 for John to stay with us. And it's a 3 of clubs. He didn't get it. So that's going to do it for the tech support guy from Toronto, Canada. He is out in third place. You know, he's a very gracious young guy, but he's devastated. He can tell he played the most brilliant poker, I think, all night long. But John Lamb is our third place finisher, and he's going to pick up $352,000. Give this amateur credit. He battled the pros for a long time, 
who are finally going out in third place. A great performance for a guy who got in here on a $160 satellite. That is right, and he's up to talk to Sabina. Thanks, guys. So I'm standing here with John. Now, as I understand, you got in on a $160 satellite today. I mean, that's an incredible experience it must have been, right? Yeah, it was. Um, I'm so amazed that I, I got this far. I, I picked up a lot from how everyone else played. I, I gained a lot of experience from this team. Well, you played really, really well today. Congratulations. Thank you. Here they come, our money presentation, courtesy of Zion's Energy. Now the cash is falling down here in Niagara Falls, right down onto the table. Millions of dollars at stake right now. Who's going to take this title? Is it going to be the factory worker? The average show up against the big bird, the professional. Stay tuned. We're coming right back with the finals in just a moment. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We are in Niagara Falls. Heads up action about to begin. Well, what a battle we're witnessing here. We've got an amateur player who works in an auto factory playing in his first tournament ever. Got in the tournament on a $90 satellite. He is our chip leader with $6.6 .6 million in chips. He's up against a top pro Canadian player, Jason Sagel, who's starting out with $3.3 .3 million in chips. Action's going to be on, Jason. He's got Jack seven of hearts this time. Oh. And he's going to limp in on the button with the jack seven of hearts. Sarwin's got a pretty strong hand. Ace nine offsuit. Well, that's when a guy limps in on the button. You have to feel like your ace nine is the best hand here. Most pros would raise right now, but Soren's opting to play conservative here to camouflage his ace. He just says, check, give us a flop. Ace nine up against jack seven. The flop is queen nine five. Soren's flops second pair with top kicker and checks. Yes, he does, and that is going to put the bait right into Big Bird. Well, Jason trying to do a little roguing here, as we say. He is reaching for chips. Those are all $5,000 chips. He said $400,000. That's going to be the bet. Oh, the bird just falling out of the nest there a little bit. He is betting four hundred grand. When you have second pair, you're always worried that the guy's got top pair. But Soren is going to make the call with the two nines. A lot of money in that pot right now, about a million and a half dollars. Here comes the turn card. It's the queen of hearts. Oh, man, Already. the nice four flush for Jason. Now, look at this. Oh, he's going to have to pay to make it, though, Vince, because Soren has gone all in here with the two nines. And Jason's mm. shaking his head. He's putting the pressure on Big Bird. Well, he knows that Soren check. He might have checked also to take a free draw at that flush. Soren didn't give him that chance. He moved all in on the turn. He's going to take this pot down. Yeah, he just roasted the big bird right there. Took over the play, and he is going to increase his lead right now. Soren Turkowicz in good form. You just got to love it. The guys take a chance to reach out to grab the brass ring and possibly can do it. And that's not only the American dream. It's the dream of everyone in every country. And certainly the World Poker Tour makes dreams and wishes come true for some. It's just extraordinary. I mean, the guy, one minute, is making cars. The next, he's trying to make top pair. <laughs> it's just incredible. Well, Vince, what I love about Soren is he's a realist. Before this final table started, he came up to me, and he said, you know, he said, I, I know this is probably a once-in-a-lifetime shot for me here at a World Poker Tour well, final. Somebody's I somebody's am somebody. thrilled to be here. I'm going to make the best of it. Well, if he takes the title, I think he's going to reevaluate. I have a the hunch. factory job. That's exactly right. All right, action on Soren with the button. He's got another big hand. Look at this ace queen, huge hand in a two-handed poker game. One million on top. Well, he's going to raise it a million dollars. So one point three. And that means he's made it a million three to go here. But right behind him, Big Bird, he's got a pair of fours. It's getting late. Well, Vance, a pair figures to be the best hand in a heads-up situation right, most of the time. Let's go all in. And Jason says all in with it. Yep, he's going with the hand. Give me the button. What are you going to do, he says. Well, Soren's going to stand up and decide here. Hard to believe he'll throw the ace-queen away, Vance, especially with so much money already in the pot. 3.8 million. He's asking, what do you got? Yeah. Is it 1.3 more? I call. All right. I call. You want a pair? Oh. Nope. So we got the classic race situation, the ace-queen, oh, the two over cards. 55%. Versus the two fours. And if the ace-queen wins this pot, the Cinderella man, Soren Turkowicz, will be famous worldwide as the everyday Joe who captured a World Poker Tour title. 
as the cards lie, Jason's a slight favorite with a pair to win this pot. If he does so, he'll be the new chip leader in this heads-up battle. That would be pretty incredible. A taste queen for Soren, two fours for Jason. Here comes the flop. This could do it. Well, the flop is Jack Jack five. That means if a five comes up, Soren will win the pot with the best hand. He'll have two pair with a bigger kicker. So Soren looking for an ace, a queen, or a five right now. Oof, more outs. And now a king comes up, giving him more outs. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter. Vince, he can now win the pot with an ace, a king, a queen, a ten, or a five. <laughs> wow. A lot of outs. Can he get one? Can Soren do this right now? Jason Sagal has held on, Vince. He has doubled up. The game is still on. Well, you can feel Soren's heart just hit the floor right there, Vince. He was one card away from capturing this championship. Just a turn of a card, literally, for $1.2 million. Well, the big bird flew the coop right there, got out of danger, escaped that, and guess who's the new chip leader right now? The antes are going up with that to $40,000. The blinds are going to be an astounding $200,000 and $400,000. What that means is you're going to see a lot of big bets from here on. Players aren't going to have enough chips to bet pre-flop, on no. the flop, on the turn, on the river. And there you see it. Soren Turkowicz going all in right here with the ace three. You don't want to play nothing, huh? You just want to shove. And right behind him, Big Bird's going to take a peek at his hand. And look at this. He's got a pretty good starting hand. He's got wow. ace nine off suit. Well, he's got the decision of his life right now in front of him, Vince. The Big Bird from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, makes his call. He would be in a dominating position. He's got more chips than Soren. If he played this pot and won it, he'd be our champion. He'd have the cash, the title, and the prestige as Canada's first World Poker Tour champion above the border. 10-8. And the big bird trying to get a little chirping out of Soren, getting him to talk, but... He's bluffing. I don't think Soren's going to say much here. No, well, as long as he lives, Vance, this could be the biggest decision he's ever going to make at the poker table. Wow. I can't believe I'm going to do this. I think he's bluffing. I call. Well, he's made the call. He's done he's it. Bluffing. He's bluffing. I knew it. Well, Jason Sagal went with his instincts there. And so far, Vance, they were right. Yes. Dominated. He's 90 as he's Right now, he is dominating his opponent. He has got ace nine. He's up against ace three. If the ace nine holds up, Jason Big Bird Sagal will be our champion. Well, Vince, you can't fault Soren for going all in with an ace high. With the blinds and ace this high in a heads-up situation. That's the best read I ever made in my life. Unfortunately for him, his opponent's got a better hand. Not over, though. I'll tell you after if I win. Now, look at Jason. I can't believe I called all my money with ace nine. He knows it's it right here. If his hand will hold up. Here comes the flop. Yes! Well, the flop has come 9-5 deuce. Now, even though Jason says yes, a four will give his opponent a straight and give him the nuts. So no longer is Soren rooting for a three. He's now rooting for a four. One four. Well, Jason realizes it's never easy. He's got top pair and top kicker, and yet his opponent still has outs. Coming down to the turn card. Well, it's not over. Jason can catch a three and split this pot. What a miracle card for Soren Turkowitz right there. And the big bird sits down back into his nest. Well, you talk about Heartbreak Hotel. Absolutely destroyed by that. 
Well, Vince, it would seem only fitting justice if a three comes up when they split this pot. But that didn't happen. It's the eight of spades. Folks, you are witnessing heartbreak in reality right sickening. now. Sickening, sickening. By Jason Sagal. He made a great call. He got his money in with the best hand. He outflopped his opponent. His opponent had a gut shot straight draw. Hit it on the turn. Unbelievable drama we're seeing here in Canada tonight, Vince. With $1.3 million at stake, it's getting crazy up here in Canada. For more World Poker Tour action, stick around. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. I can't believe it. Suck out, Bill, here at Niagara Falls. That's what we're watching. Well, Vance, what's been amazing about this heads-up battle is that both players have been one card away from capturing this championship, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't hold their opponent off, and what we've seen is dramatic flip-flop action. It is on the big bird. He's got king five. He says all in with it. He's only got about a million two left. Let's take a look at Soren's cards. Oh, look at this. That's the same hand he just had a moment yeah. ago when he doubled up the ace three. So he's definitely going to play this. He's called it, and he likes it. He is out in front with ace three. Well, if he wins this pot, the ace three will go on the mantle as his favorite hand for the rest of his life. Oh, get out the smelling salts here for Big Bird. It has happened so fast. It has turned around, and right now, he's just a few cards away from being runner-up in this event. Well, he's probably thinking, you know, this guy's outdrawn me every time, and seemingly so far, maybe I'll outdraw him one time here. I'm only a three to two underdog to do it. Why can't I outdraw him once? 1178. Soren Turkowicz with an edge right now. Only 27 years old. Works with auto parts all day with a shot here. Let's take a look at the flop. Well, a five comes right on the flop. So Jason Sagal, the one starting to get lucky now, Vince. Right now he's got the lead with two fives. His opponent's got to catch an ace. Two running diamonds to make a flush or two running cards to make a wheel to end this tournament right now. The plot thickens. Well, a nine comes off on the turn. That means Soren must catch an ace on the river to capture this title right now. This could happen right now for Soren Cherkovic if he should get lucky. Well, Jason says, I've already had enough bullets at me today. I can't take one more. Here's the card. Well, it's a four of diamonds. Not going to do it. So Jason Sagal sits back down. The pro has doubled up. Oh, yes. The big bird gets a little revenge off the factory worker. Well, these guys have been battling this tournament for four long days and nights. One of them is going to take home over $1.3 million and a coveted WPT title. And Vince, whoever wins, they're both going to feel like that they've been in World War III. I'm telling you, this has been quite a battle. Well, refill the old coffee jug, ladies and gentlemen. This is not over. Big Bird back in action. Well, you're right, Vance. Right now, he's only a two-to-one chip disadvantage to his opponent, meaning if he wins one pot here in a double up, he'll have a two-to-one chip lead over Soren. Okay, let's go to the table. It's back on Soren. Looking down Smaller. at King. Deuce, he says, all wow. in here. Let's take a you look sure? at Jason Sagal. Big Bird's hand would like to pick up a huge pair, of course. Something spectacular. Let's take a look at his cards. Well, it's an ace five. Let's do it. Well, he says, oh. let's go with it. Yep, he is. And again, Jason is the favorite here. And remember, if he wins this pot, he's going to have a two to one chip advantage over Soren. Just ace incredible. Five, he's, King Deuce. he's getting pumped up again. Well, as the cards lie, he's about a two to one favorite to win this pot and have a two to one chip advantage. Uh, he can feel the momentum has switched. He likes his chances. In the driver's seat right now is Big Bird. Well, Soren saying to himself, let me suck out just one more time. I'll never ask again. King Deuce up against Ace-5. Going after $1.3 million. The difference between first and second, about 700 grand. Quite significant. Here we go. Well, Soren Turkowicz has had several key draw outs here. Can he do it one more time and take this title? He's done it so far. A deuce pops right off of there. He has taken the lead with two deuces. Oh, boy. Jason, just biting his lip now. He's just saying, how can this keep happening to me? Unbelievable. Jason looking for an ace or a five. 
Of course, he could catch two cards and make it straight. That would do it also. But he's got to have help, Vince. Uh, he is desperate right now. Here comes the turn card. It's a four. That gives an open-ended straight draw to Big Bird. Well, it does. It gives eight more outs, as we say. In addition to an ace and a five, he can now catch an eight or a three, which would give him a straight to also win this pot. Will this flip-flop once again? It's all coming down to this. Is the factory worker going to take the title? He's one card from becoming a millionaire. Let's go to the river. Can Cinderella put on the glass slipper if he can dodge an ace, an eight, a five, or a three? Soren Turkowicz will be our champion. Here comes the river card. It's a jack. Soren Turkowicz has done it. Folks, the factory worker is the king of Canada right now. Go into the crowd. He's a millionaire. Well, what class being displayed by Jason Segel right here. I'm sorry it had to come down. This guy took several major beats against Soren at this final table, yet every time has displayed dignity and class. Just horrific cards there at the end for Big Bird, but going to the crowd is our champion, and look at this. Tears all around for Soren Turkowicz, and why not? The Cinderella man has done it. He took $90, turned it in over $1.3 million. What a story. Put on the seatbelts. We're going to go for a ride here. Soren, I got to tell you, you are living proof that Cinderella on the World Poker Tour can wear the glass slipper. You're an amateur player who's playing in his first big time tournament ever. You got into this tournament for $90. You're taking home over $1.3 million and a WPT title. Well, you certainly got a nice fan group, no doubt about that. And several times you had to draw out, you did so. Maybe those guys had something to do with it. Congratulations to Soren Turkowicz, our champion. And now it's time to toast our champion with Budweiser, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. And here's to our champion of the North American Poker Championship, Soren Turkowicz. Van Patten, Sabina Gadecki, and everyone at the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters. I don't know.